What's up guys, Matty here. Today we are gonna take a beat produced by Little Rich for the song Big Joints by Cam Meekins and mix it using just FabFilter plugins. Let's go. All right guys, so here is the track. I already color coded it, that's all I've really done. Um, I like to do music in green, drums in yellow, and bass stuff in blue. And then if you look at my mixer here, I put them all in, in, in different buses. A lot of times with beats especially, I like to work with buses because it's easier just to affect a bunch of things at once. So I have the bass bus, which these two bass tracks are going to. I have the kick and snare bus, where my, or a clap in this instance, where my kick and snare are going to. I got the hi-hat and bongo bus, which my percussion are going to. And then last but not least, um, music, which all this stuff goes here. If it's different kind of song where there's strings and, and maybe guitars or something, I'll split those out in buses, but this is a pretty simple track with a few melody instruments. So we're just gonna send those out to one bus. So first and foremost, what I like to do before I start mixing a beat is get something going on my master bus. I um, you know, personally believe that you wanna kind of mix with the loudness that uh, the song's gonna have at the end. So, you know, if we're talking LUFS, I still go right around negative nine, which is pretty loud, but for hip hop, it's, it's average. Um, the reason I like doing that, because I want my limiter to be hitting while I'm mixing, so I know what it's gonna do to my drums. Because, you know, when you start mixing the beat and then put the limiter on at the end, it just crushes all the transients of your drums. So I always wanna kinda know what I'm mixing into. So that's why I always start with that first. So. What we're gonna do here is set it up really quick and a little shameless plug, I'm just gonna use um, some of these Fab Filter preset, uh, master presets I have on my website. I'm gonna start off with the Warm Smile preset and that loads me up with a bunch of plugins and I'll show you what they do. First is just Saturn, it's just giving a little bit of drive, like real light um, tube, just to give it a little bit of warmth and then this compressor, which we're gonna set in a hot second. Uh, a de-esser, which we won't need. The high frequency de-esser I use on mastering sometimes is only really to catch vocals and hi-hats sometimes if needed, but that's usually when I'm just mastering. If I'm mixing and mastering, I'm gonna fix that stuff on the mix. Um, and then this is the reason it's called Warm Smiles, just got a little bit of a smile or EQ, which we'll tweak and then a limiter. So let's play this. I'm gonna get this mastering chain tightened up and then we can move on to the individual instrument. Okay, so because we're doing this for YouTube, I'm not gonna blast it out and keep it right around negative 14 LUFS, but if this was not, we'd probably have it quite a bit louder, um, but I just wanna blow you guys' ears out. So that's pretty much good, just to get us set up. Now, we can always go back to our mastering stuff, or, our, or in this case, really just our, our bus um, EQ and compression, but it's good just to get it started, so at least we have something and we're mixing into it. So once that's all set up, I like to move into drums. And I like to just get them popping a little more along with the bass. So what I'll do is I'll mute my music and I'll probably mute my hi-hats and just hear what the kick and bass are doing and see what we can do to make that hit harder. So one of the first things I hear right out the gate is that I want the kick to be able to hit off the bass. And so what I'll do a lot of times with Fab Filter stuff is set up two Q3s, one on my 808 and one on my kick, right? Do, do, do. And then I'll go to this. I'm gonna send this out. Well, actually we can do this through here. I'm gonna send this as side chain 
to the kick, right? So now the kick will have a side chain to the 808, right? And I'm gonna put this on um, post, so whenever I move the fader, it won't affect the side chain. And then what I'll do is go back to my 808 EQ, bring this up, and then look at the kick. And so what this is doing is it's gonna show me where the energy of the kick is on the bass on the 808. So check it out. So you can see right here, the red lit up a bit. So that's basically where my kick frequency is, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go make dynamic, I'm gonna bring this in fairly close, and then I'm gonna pull this down, right? Then we go to auto, bring that out, and click on side chain. So now, whenever the kick hits, it's gonna duck the 808 just at that frequency. And if you notice, the kick hits a little bit harder once that's happening. So that gets that set up so that our kick and our, our bass are getting out of the way of each other a little bit. Next, I wanna always get a little bit of saturation going on my drums, and sometimes the 808 depending, but definitely on the drums just to get them hitting a little bit harder. So we're gonna bring up Saturn 2. I'm gonna split it up a couple ways. Do, do, do. I like to use the general transformer. Then I'll select all these, and so that's all three of them are selected now. So whenever I move this, it will change it. I'm just gonna bring these up until it starts doing something. And see how that just thickens the drums up so much? And then now I can individually go in and then sometimes I'll dial back the, the, the low end section if it's just like distorting a little too much, right? And then we can go in here, just get our clap hitting a little bit more. Gonna bring up the Fab Q3. And then we'll add a little bit, just a light compression to our kick snare, just to bring them together a little bit more. So you can hear now the kick and snare just, it pulled it together, just glued them together a little bit so they're just right with each other. So now let's go back to our bass um, and we're gonna put another, we'll just drag this Saturn over. Do do, whoops, I took the wrong one. Yeah, there we go. And then we're just gonna do the same thing, except on this, we are going to, what we got on this one? Here we got warm tape. This one I actually wanted transform on there, but the warm tape works. Um, we're going to do uh, transformer gentle here, here, and the high end doesn't really matter. So let's just do it these two and then see what we got. Or sometimes with this, what I'll do is, let's actually get rid of these. Let's start fresh. Ah, let me see. Can I just kill these? Let me just get a new one. Dun, dun, dun. What I'll do is start fresh on this. And a lot of times what I'm gonna to wanna to do on uh, 808s is do a parallel of it. So you could even use the amp, right? Okay, so it's cranked now. Then we'll pull our parallel back. So you guys on smaller speakers probably heard the, the bass finally come through. So now, because what we're doing is we're just adding just a touch of distortion to it, but that just helps it crack through a little bit more. Um, I didn't like what it's doing on some of the higher end, so we're just gonna figure that out.
So it's super slight, but that's okay. That's what we want. We want it to be slight. We want to change the bass sound. We just want it to hit a little harder. And then lastly, what we'll do, just to give this a little more thump, is just give ourselves a little boost around 60 hertz here and see if, I mean, uh, 31 hertz, which is really, you know, a shelf up to 60-ish. So now we're hitting pretty hard, looking pretty well. So now let's bring the percussion in. So it's feeling pretty good. I still want my kick and snare to hit a little bit harder. So I'm gonna bring another compressor, right? I know this sounds crazy. And we're just gonna do a parallel compression. Um, so we're gonna do a little oversampling just to make it sound better. And then I'm just gonna slam this and then we'll mix it in. So you notice we lose a little high end when we do this, I mean low end when we do this, but it starts punching better. And that's sometimes more what we want. The bass can carry the low end where we get our punch from our drums. So just to see where we're at so far, let's mute, unmute all these and then turn them back on. So now we're sounding thicker, we're sounding punchier, it's feeling good. So now, last but not least, let's bring our music in and then see what we can do there. So the music sounds amazing as is. The only thing I want to do is just take this, the main synth part, right? We're going to just do a shelf boost on it, but we're going to do just the sides. So it will give us a little more energy on the sides. And then we're going to take another shelf, right? And just dip it a little bit in the middle. All right, so this mid side stuff, um, but we'll just do it around three-ish, right? Because what this will do is give it room for our vocal because that's going to be stuff that's going to be in the middle of the vocal. So you always want to you know, make sure your beats have enough room for the vocalists to do their thing. So this will hopefully help give us a little more width but take out a little bit of the middle. All right, guys, so that was a short and sweet mix using just Fab Filter plugins on a beat. Hopefully, you got a lot out of it. Let me know which plugins you're using for your beat mixing, especially if they're Fab Filters and how you're using them in the comments below. If you need your songs Mix and Master, you can hit me up at mixandmastermysong.com. You can also find my courses and presets, including the mastering presets I used here on the site as well. Talk to you soon.